So if you're looking at laser engravers and laser cutters, then you're probably seeing a bunch of different machines. We're gonna break down what you really need to know and I'll give you my top recommendations for what machines might work best for you. So my name is Brandon and welcome to the shop. This is actually kind of the laser corner. We have a few machines that we'll definitely talk about including the Glowforge right there. But I actually first got started because I wanted just to laser engrave super simple stuff like this as well as cut out different shapes and parts for a bunch of different things. So of all of the tools that I have in my shop, I still think lasers are my favorite just because they're really easy to use for the most part and they're usually really quick to get you to your final part that you're working on. So before we get into specific machines, let's talk about the big differences between them all. So the biggest difference is going to be in how the actual laser is made. And we're gonna talk about three main categories. So first up are going to be diode lasers. And this is the actual laser portion off of a diode laser. And this literally moves along a gantry and this is what gives you your final product. So the laser beam just comes out right down there. Now, most of the time you're gonna use diode lasers for engraving. You're really not gonna use them for cutting very much and the wattages are gonna be pretty low. So anywhere from one and a half watts up to maybe five to 10 watts depending on how it's made. But this is a pretty good example of how most diode lasers will work. They'll be on some type of gantry like this that can move this way as well as this way. And that is how the laser actually will engrave your piece. And the next step is going to be CO2 lasers. So these lasers have a big glass tube that is typically in the back of the machine that generates the actual laser beam. And then a series of mirrors will reflect the beam around the machine onto your actual workpiece. So the benefit of those is they're gonna give you a lot more power. Really the lowest you're gonna start out is 40 watts. And those will go all the way up to like 150 or 200 watts. And then just for a super general rule of thumb around 40 up to about 90 watts, you're gonna be able to cut through a quarter inch piece of plywood in one pass. The 90 watts up, you can step that up to about a half inch and then you can go even thicker as you go further up. And the last type of laser that we're gonna talk about are fiber laser. Basically you'd use a fiber laser to do anything on metal. And most fiber lasers will also use that same mirror system as a CO2 laser, but the actual mirror itself is going to adjust versus the CO2 laser, which will bounce the beam into a little lens that is again on a gantry. So what that means is they are really, really fast. Now, another big difference between all of these different machines is going to be the actual work area. So how big of something can you engrave or cut with the machine? This is not only in like the X and the Y, but also how thick of material you can get inside of your machine. And then another big difference is going to be software. So some of these machines will come with software that is custom to that specific brand. So Glowforge, they run their own software, Full Spectrum runs their own software, but a lot of them are more open and you can actually use a bunch of different software packages with them. And if it's a laser that lets me pick the software, I usually am gonna go with Lightburn just because I can use it with diode lasers, as well as the bigger DSP style machines that have controller units. And the last major difference between all of these machines are just like your overall features. For features like cameras or air assist or cooling, or even general safety features like not letting you open a lid when the laser is running. Now, when I first started researching lasers, I actually made a spreadsheet that had all of the different machines. Then I had columns for all those different differences like work area, power, features. And that was something I just used internally, but I got enough questions about it that I actually threw it up online. So if you actually go to makeorbreakshop.com forward slash laser, we'll have a written review of all of these machines as well as all of them broken down the best that I can so you can kind of compare the different machines and what they can do. Okay, so let's actually talk about some specific machines. So first off, let's talk about diode lasers. And again, these are the ones that are typically really low power and most of the time you're gonna be doing engraving. I have reviewed several ones from Ortour in the past. And then currently this is the one that I typically use. This is the Ortour Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro. Super long name, but it does a really good job. You can see it actually has a pretty massive work area. Uh, and so you can do some pretty big stuff with this machine, but with pretty much any diode laser, where they're gonna be lacking is with safety features. So there's no air assist, which means there's no piece of compressed air that is putting out any fires the laser is gonna make. Pretty much all CO2 lasers are gonna have that. And then probably the most obvious is this is open. So you're exposed to the laser beam. Um, the Pro has a little nice feature where it has this covered up 
up so you don't have to look at it directly, but because they have lower wattage and they don't have a lot of bells and whistles to them, they typically are pretty cheap compared to the CO2 lasers. So there's even a smaller version of that OTOR laser uh, that is just a few hundred bucks. The Pro at the time of this recording is about 500 and the non-Pro version of that machine is around 400 bucks. Now, if you start looking for diode lasers, you're gonna find there are a bunch of different brands out there that pretty much are giving you the same type of machine. I just have hands-on experience with OTOR. Another brand you could check out is Adam stack. I actually have a machine coming from them pretty soon. And what I'm really interested to see is they have a new laser module, which basically is two diode lasers that have the beam come down to one spot, meaning that you can have increased wattage, you can cut through more stuff, and you can run it quicker. It's kind of like with the next wing with the lasers on the wings and it goes pew pew and it goes to the middle and blows up. Yeah, I'm, yeah. And then one other machine that isn't out yet, it's actually a pre-order, is the MakeBlock D1. This is going to be even more expensive than that Pro unit, but the overall build quality looks like it's going to be higher as well, because actually MakeBlock makes a pretty nice CO2 unit that I've done a review of in the past. So it'll be pretty interesting to see how they translate some of those CO2 features into the diode world. And then the other category before we get to the big one is going to be fiber lasers. Now I've actually reviewed a unit from Ohmtech and they're just really cool to use and they're really, really fast. So if you are wanting to engrave metal things, specifically things that are pretty small, um, Ohmtech is probably gonna be your cheapest option. And then if you wanna step it up in terms of bells and whistles, then you can look at some of the units provided by Full Spectrum, like their Full Spectrum Pandora, which is a fully enclosed unit, as well as their Full Spectrum Muse Galvo, which I think is the Pandora, just it isn't closed in with as many of those features. Okay, so now let's talk about the category that has lots of machines and companies inside of it, and that is CO2 machines. In fact, last year when I did this review that broke down all the different machines, I think I only had three different categories, but this time it's gonna be five. First, we're gonna talk about desktop, then we're gonna talk about budget, then mid-range, then high-end, and then finally, Pro. Okay, so for desktop units, they literally are the machines that will sit on a desk. I've also kind of called these Kickstarter units in the past. These units typically are going to be small in wattage as well as small in work area, um, but they're gonna have a lot of features and bells and whistles built into them. So the first one, which is probably the most popular, is the Glowforge. Again, I've done a full review on it if you want to check it out. But the main takeaway for me was it's just really easy to use if you've never used a laser before. The cool system, the air assist is all just built directly into the unit. But the big drawback for a lot of people with Glowforge is that it's a closed system. You have to use their own software, which is web-based. And if you really like to get into the weeds and tinker with things, you really can't do that with a machine like the Glowforge. And then pretty similar to that is the full spectrum Muse. And it actually does look taller because I've got a riser that this is placed on top of. But this is the typical unit right here. Again, the full spectrum Muse is going to have a lot of features similar to Glowforge, which is gonna have cameras built in. It's got autofocus. But the big differences between the two is that the Muse has their cooling and air compressor as a separate unit. Um, so that's just something else that you'll have to place. But then on the positive side, they do have their own software, but you don't have to be connected to Wi-Fi. You can actually run that locally, directly from a computer that's hooked up to it. And another nice thing about Full Spectrum is this isn't the only machine that they make. Unlike Glowforge, which basically they have three different versions of the same model. But Full Spectrum actually has a full professional line. And so they serve customers with a bunch of different needs. And what that really means for you is they have accessories that you probably can't get for Glowforge, like having a riser, which raises the whole machine up. They have a rotary on the inside. If you're wanting to engrave tumblers or anything circular, you're able to pull from other features they have on their higher end machines. Now, the other one that I also have a hands-on review of is the MakeBlock Laser Box, which is pretty similar to both of these in terms of features and power and carve ability. And then really the final one in this category is the Flux BMO. And I mention it because it's a lower wattage, it's 30 watts, but it also has a smaller footprint, which also means it's not as expensive. So if you really need something small, but still something that has a lot of the nicer features, like the integrated cameras and a lot of the safety features, then BMO could be a good option for you. Now, even though we're starting with the desktop units, we're definitely not starting on the low end of the budget because these have a lot more features and a lot more things directly built 
into them, you're gonna be starting at at least $2,000 for these machines. And most of the time they're gonna fall in the three to $4,000 range. And then it can go all the way up to over $6,000 for the Glowforge Pro, as well as the full spectrum Muse 3D. So when you're looking at these, you're really comparing that price to ease of use, especially if you're not having to cut out or engrave really large pieces of material, which these aren't gonna be able to handle. Okay, so let's talk about a lot cheaper machines. Actually, let's go as cheap as you can get on the CO2 side of things. We're gonna talk about the K40, which is basically like a nickname that people give a 40 watt desktop unit that is imported from China. Now for those type units, I'll talk about Ohmtech. They're a US supplier of those machines that also provides support. So it's nice that you can actually get someone on the phone if you've got questions. Now their 40 watt desktop unit is around 500 bucks. So a lot cheaper than even the base 2000 on those desktop machines. And the big difference is you're not gonna get any bells and whistles pretty much. So no cameras, there's gonna be no air assist. You're gonna be a lot smaller in your work area even compared to these machines. But on the pro side of things, it's gonna be cheaper. And if you like to tinker, you can really upgrade it. There's a great community around the K40 specifically of lots of people adding upgrades to their unit. And actually I recently did a video that walked through how to upgrade a K40 to the type of features that you would get in our desktop units. And then looking at the price comparison and the feature comparison and seeing if it worth it. Now the other machine I'll include in the budget category, which is going to be a 50 watt machine from Ohmtech. And this is actually the very first laser that I had in my shop. And it's one that I straight up bought. And it really opened me up to this crazy world of lasers. Now the big benefit of those 50 watt units is they have a better controller that's already built in. You're not gonna have to upgrade your 40 watt controller to do that. So you can use software like Lightburn. Now, not only are the brains nicer on that unit, but then also you have a much bigger work area. And actually for that 50 watt unit, it's gonna be bigger than these desktop units as well, especially on the thickness. It's just a good deal bigger machine and it's got higher wattage. Now those are like 1600 to 2000. So if you were to upgrade a 40 watt unit, you're getting pretty close to that price point already. So most of the time I recommend if you've got the budget for it and you're planning to do those upgrades anyway, just go ahead and go with that 50 watt unit because you're also gonna get a much, much bigger work area built in with it. So one of the drawbacks with using software like Lightburn is if you're not used to that type of software, even like vector editors or laser control software, it can be pretty confusing. Like what settings do I use? How do I hook up my machine? How do I control it? And I'm actually in the process of putting together a full course that will walk you through that where you can be up and running and actually making things versus fiddling with the software. I'm actually producing that course right now and I'm putting out new lessons on a weekly basis. This really can take you from knowing nothing to actually having something made quick. So there is a link down in the description with a discount if you wanna check it out. Okay, so now let's talk about our mid-range CO2s. Now this mid-range is actually pretty similar in price to our desktop units. So that three to $6,000, but they're gonna be much more powerful machines and much bigger work area, but they're not gonna have as many bells and whistles as our desktop units. And typically these are gonna be machines that are imported from China and then rebranded. So brands like Laguna or Boss do something similar. And then the one we've already talked about out is Ohmtech. And then Ohmtech has recently kind of restructured how they do their machines where you basically can get any wattage in three different versions. So you can get a manual focus, you can get an automatic focus, and then you can get a automatic Z axis, meaning the floor can move up and down. So really anything with an automatic focus or a movable Z axis, I'll throw into this mid range. And again, that wattage will range from 60 all the way through and past 100 watts. But then on the drawback, you won't have the features like integrated cameras, air assist and the water pump and chiller will be separate units. Sometimes you have to buy those separately with the machine. And then it doesn't have integrated software, which could be a pro or a con for you, depending on what you wanna look at. So the high-end CO2s is the category we really didn't have last year, at least when I was doing this review. And it kind of started with Full Spectrum. They released their Full Spectrum Muse Titan, which basically uses the same brains as this unit, but it has a work area of two feet by four feet, which is just massive. But then I would put Full Spectrum's Pro Series in this line as well. And they basically are taking the nicer features of these desktop units and then throwing it into something the size of our mid-range CO2s. And then some newer companies, at least to me, are Aeon, Thunder, and Rabbit. Specifically the Aeon Mirror Series. 
and then the Thunder Nova series. Those are still good size machines, but from everything I've seen, the quality of those are just a step up of that mid-range that you could get from Ohmtech, meaning they're gonna have higher reliability, you can run them faster, and you're gonna get a better final result. And really where I see these machines sitting for you is if you're actually running a business. So it's really more of an ROI conversation versus just having a cool tool in your shop to make things on the weekends. And then really running a business with a CO2 laser brings us to our last category, and these are gonna be our pro machine. So if you really are a professional, these are the high-end lasers. Now, these are basically machines where you can't find the price listed online unless it, like you get on the phone with someone, so you know it's gonna be expensive. Now, most of these are gonna be like $10,000 and up for brands like Epilogue, Universal, and Trotec. Trotec? I think I said that right. But not only are the features and the build gonna be top notch, but they're also gonna provide great documentation, great support, and great training. Now, a few other oddballs I'll throw in here as well are gonna be actual diode units. You'll connect directly to a CNC router, so something like the Inventables X-Carve or Carbide 3D. And most of the time, you'll see these coming from JTEC. But then I've also seen nicer units from Opt Laser. Uh, but Opt Laser, those are like several hundred bucks. And really, if you're wanting to laser engrave, at that point, I would just get a standalone diode unit because they're super light, they're really easy to work with, and most of the times, they can move a good bit quicker. And then finally, it's gonna be Snapmaker. And Snapmaker, two which is like a modular system. So they'll give you like an X, Y, and Z gantry, but then you can add a laser module or a spindle module or a 3D printer module, and you can do a bunch of different things with that unit. But what do I actually recommend? So for the diode lasers, I really like the Otour Laser Master Engraver 2, and potentially the Pro if you wanna spend a little bit more money and get more features. And then for the desktop units, it still is really a toss up between Glowforge and Full Spectrum. I've done full reviews on both of those and I break them down. But if you really were gonna press me, I would probably lean a little bit towards Glowforge. The Wi-Fi lock-in isn't an issue for me, but I definitely know that that software piece could be a big piece for you. And then for the budget, units, I would get the 50 watt from Ohmtech, and that's the one that I have bought, versus upgrading a K40, unless you just really like tinkering and you want to do that as a project. And then for the mid-range, I mean, it really depends on your specific situation, but probably something like a 90 to 100 watt unit from Ohmtech. And then for the high-end CO2s, the Aeon Mira five for about 6,000. Really seems like a super nice machine in a pretty small package, but has lots of capabilities. And I've seen lots of people enjoy using that machine specifically. And then finally on the top top end, I would probably say Epilogue just because I've seen their stuff more than the other companies. But really any company at that point is gonna be great for you. So I've actually gotten hands-on with a lot of these machines and I put together a full playlist of all those different reviews right up there that you can dig into more details right now. And let me know what I missed and what machine you have or would get right down in the comments below. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.